everyone, Ivy here, and today I'm going to talk about turning um, this cheap costume umbrella that I found online into a much nicer looking prop for some of my historical costumes. The reason that I chose this project is because antique parasols are beautiful, but they're often extremely expensive and also pretty delicate. So they're not really something that you should really be carrying around with you while you're in costume anyway. But I also wasn't really happy with any of the reproduction pieces that I saw online. Again, they were also pretty expensive and honestly not that special. So what I want to do today is replace the cover on this parasol so that it's something a little bit more exciting. And then I will also be putting a new handle on it as well. In order to get started, you're going to open up your parasol. And at the end of each spoke is one of these little pegs, which is actually what keeps the uh, fabric um, tight on the frame. So you can actually just pull on each of these little pegs and they just will pop right off. And most umbrellas, modern umbrellas are all made this way. So you can either um, use a costume frame like what I found, or maybe you found a cute frame at an antique store that just needs a little bit of love. Um, but pretty much all umbrellas function in that way. Once you've taken all the pegs off, you're going to just unscrew, get it off. You're going to unscrew the cap at the top. This one is not cooperating with me. Unscrew the cap at the top. Um, once you've taken the fabric off the frame, you're going to take either a sharp pair of embroidery scissors or a um, seam ripper and you're going to remove each peg from the fabric. Once you've taken off all of the pegs, you're going to need to um, take one of the panels out so that you can measure it to make a new one. Um, once you've taken it off, I highly recommend giving it a quick iron so that it lays flat while you try and cut your new pieces. Um, also, the seam allowance on this is really, really small, and I suspect that actually after it was sewn, they probably cut those seam allowances away. So I'm probably going to add another half inch back to the seam allowance so that I can comfortably sew the pieces together without having to take a super small seam allowance. If everything went according to plan, you should have six little triangles um, that are in the same shape as the piece that you cut from the original umbrella. Obviously, the next step is to sew them back together the way that it would go on the frame. And at this stage, I wanna let you know that you should finish your seams neatly because when you um, extend the umbrella and people are looking at you, people will be able to see the inside of the umbrella. So if your seams are really messy and unfinished, it'll be kind of noticeable. Once you've sewn those triangles together, you should have something that looks like this. This is also the stage where you should add all of your trim. I decided that I wanted my parasol to be monochromatic so that I felt like I could wear it with a lot of different things. But because it's monochromatic, I felt like it was important to have a lot of detail so that it didn't feel too plain. I settled on doing some fancy braid detailing, which is called soutache, and I also picked out this trim, which reminds me of some examples of trim that I've seen on some antique parasols. Although this video is not about soutache, it's one of my all-time favorite techniques, so I'll give you some quick tips on how to use it. Soutache is a style of very narrow braid trim that was popular in the Victorian era, especially in the middle of the 19th century, but you'll see it throughout the period. It's very important to buy good quality soutache. If you don't, you'll get a lot of really unpleasant looking snags when you try and turn corners or do curves. It's also a good idea to buy a presser foot that's meant specifically for doing braid work. They have a hole through the center, so after you guide the braid through the hole, you can more or less forget about it and just follow your stitch lines. Also, tight corners are the most difficult thing to do well. It's definitely possible, but if you're as lazy as me, you can just design your braid pattern not to have any corners at all and still get more or less the same effect. Okay, once you have trimmed your fabric and sewn it together and finished the seams on the inside, it's time to go ahead and sew those little tiny pegs into each corner. If you've decided not to fiddle about with the handle, then you're almost done at this stage. Once you've sewn the pegs on, you can remount the fabric back to the frame, screw the peg back onto the top, and then anchor each spoke to each seam in order to make sure that the spokes don't get tangled when you're opening and closing your parasol. On the other hand, if you were not very happy with the handle that it came with, um, I'm going to talk through some options on how to um, make some changes to the handle so that it's a little bit more um, sophisticated looking. So I have here a little stack of umbrellas that I have done some kind of work on and I'm going to show you what I've done to each handle. Now on this first one, I didn't do anything at all to this handle and I think it kind of shows. You can see that this is just like a plain white plastic on either end and personally I think it looks a little cheap. 
Um, so for this one, I really should have done something to the handle. I think wrapping this in a matching ribbon might have been a really good choice. That is pretty simple. And then you could probably just like hot glue that ribbon to the handle. Um, this is another really good option for trim if you don't want to get super fancy with soutache or something like that. And this is also why you're going to want to anchor each umbrella rib to the inside of the fabric. Because if you don't, you can see that they get tangled and they get caught on each other and it becomes impossible to open. Now, sometimes I've seen these umbrella frames and the original nylon wasn't tacked to each rib. You should really just do it anyway, even if the original didn't have it because there's nothing worse than trying to take pictures or video or whatever and embarrassingly trying to like untangle your parasol um, because it's not finished correctly. This umbrella had the same style of handle as the one that I took apart. It's kind of this like gross, squishy, like foam thing. And I really could not figure out what to do with it. So I just made like a little um, tube and stitched it over the top of the handle. I think it's passable. I don't think it looks amazing, but at the time I wasn't really sure what else I could realistically do with it. So that's what I ended up doing with that one. Um, also, I should have taken the time to uh, paint the tip of this. Uh, I was rushing to the event and I just didn't end up having time, unfortunately, but um, before I use this parasol again, I probably will sit down and paint it. Again, this is all pre-made trim. So I used a pre-pleated chiffon on this one. And then last is this one that I got. That's an antique umbrella. So um, this one I actually did not do the fabric for. It already had pretty good um, fabric on it already and I really liked the color scheme so I didn't end up doing anything with the fabric at all. Um, it didn't have any kind of handle at all when I bought it though. It was just the other end of a screw uh, poking up out of the umbrella stem. So consequently I got a really good deal on this. I think that this umbrella frame was actually only about $8 and I bought a fancy umbrella handle which I actually had to search cane toppers in order to find this. And I gotta admit, I did not do the greatest job attaching this rabbit to the stem. I just put a bunch of hot glue on it and I jammed it on there and it seems to be working out fine. I am not sure how I would realistically do this differently. So if you have any suggestions, I would be very excited if you have any thoughts on a better way to replace an umbrella handle. I'd be very interested to hear them. Okay, so despite the fact that gluing that umbrella handle probably still isn't necessarily the best way to do this, I think it's the best option that I have. So I am probably going to do that again. Like I said, I searched cane toppers on Etsy in order to find this. I think I paid around $20 for it, so it wasn't um, too terribly expensive. Uh, but what I will say is that if you are okay with a planer handle and uh, don't want to fuss with this at all, they do make like Edwardian style frames for about $50, which ultimately is probably about what I paid uh, for the frame and handle. So it doesn't necessarily save you any money to do this, but it, it does give you a, a much nicer end result because the handle is a lot more special and a lot more unique. So I cut the sponge handle off of this one. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. It just didn't occur to me. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like jam this bolt Oh God, is it gonna fit? You guys, if it doesn't fit, I'm going to be very disappointed. I don't think it's gonna fit. It doesn't fit. But the reason that it doesn't fit is because somebody had the same idea that I did and the post, um, while being hollow, it happens to be full of hardened glue right now. So I'm just gonna take my awl, I'm gonna stab it a bunch of times to see if I can get the, the glue to break up. If that doesn't work, I might try and melt it with a heat gun. Okay, so I definitely had a lot more trouble with the handle than I was anticipating. I am feeling kind of done for the day after the whole debacle with the handle, so um, you probably won't see the gold peg until the final edit. So um, yeah, let me put together an outfit to go with this and I will show you what it looks like all together.
Okay, so what was intended to be a tutorial has very quickly turned into a cautionary tale instead. So while at the end I did end up with a more or less workable parasol, it is not amazing. All the instructions I gave you are fine and totally applicable to pretty much any umbrella. But the thing that I was super unhappy with for this umbrella is the frame. I ended up running into a ton of problems with this specific umbrella frame. And honestly, it makes sense. I think I bought it for like $12. So you can't expect the highest quality when you're buying something for $12. Two of the biggest issues that I ran into are, number one, these spokes, when I was trying to put it back, the fabric back on the frame, they bent, like two of them bent. So now my parasol is a little bit lumpy on one side because two of the spokes are broken, essentially. The other thing that I had just so much trouble with that it probably wasn't even worth it in the end was the handle. So ultimately what I ended up doing was using a power drill to drill into the existing glue. I then added even more glue and stuck the bolt into that side. I didn't have the right kind of glue to do it. I used hot glue, which dries um, into a, like a rubbery finish. So every time you try and tighten the knob, you are just screwing up the glue on the inside of the handle. And honestly, in the end, it's probably not even worth it. The somewhat bad news on that front is that this specific style of umbrella frame is very difficult to find. So these Victorian and Edwardian style umbrella frames, the actual umbrella parasol part only takes up about half of the umbrella stem. It doesn't go all the way up to the top, which is what most modern umbrellas will end up looking like. So finding a high quality frame can be pretty difficult to pull off. So now that I have become totally obsessed with having a decent quality Victorian umbrella, I did buy the other style that is available from Historical Emporium. Unfortunately, it's a fairly expensive umbrella frame and it will clock you about $70 after shipping and tax, but it is a lot higher quality. Personally, I think it's kind of a shame to spend $70 on something that you're just gonna take apart. The handle's also not particularly special. That's the other thing that I wasn't super impressed with. So for $70, this is not a great buy, but this is an even worse buy. So up to you whether you wanna cheap out and just live with the problems on this frame or whether you're willing to sink the money into something a little bit nicer in order to have something a lot sturdier. Hopefully at least some of this video was useful to you even though I wouldn't necessarily recommend about half the things that I did in it.